G'day there, mate. My name is Mr. McGillicuddy, and welcome back once again to my channel. Today, we will be continuing the story of Ghostwire Tokyo. So, in the previous episode, we managed to reunite with KK again. After running into a woman at his apartment, who... Was she alive, or was she dead? Most likely dead. Apparently, she was part of the old crew KK ran with. And there's a bit more to KK's story than he lets on. But... He just clams up about it. Anyway, after doing a couple a couple of side quests, we'll be doing some more, because, hey, I love the extra content. Even if it is a bit uh, droll sometimes. Still gives me some good subjects to talk about, though, so that's the right side. So, let's dive straight into it, shall we? Still don't know how to unravel that bit of a fog there. Unless it does go down to here, which... Nah, it doesn't. Mm. Alright, so we need to go here. Central Hospital, so luckily we can fast travel there. Though, I'm not going to do that because I need to pick up ammunition. It's like ether. I need to start calling it that stuff because I know you guys will probably start ramping on saying it's called ether, not ammo. That plays the same thing, so shut up. Oh boy. Oh, some of us are stealth. Even I did like a ballerina. As a four. Here we go again. Who's over here? One of those ghosts. So sad. Can I have to start picking up some more ether? If I may say, I know I probably should have talked about this a while back, but uh, the name, Ethereal, the last time I ever heard, read that word was actually when I was playing World of Warcraft. I'm not kidding. Other than that, other than that I never even heard of that word until now, because even then I thought it was just a word made up by them. But of course back then I thought a lot of stuff was real. Those are the regular students who will just check out these uh, capsule machines. I still see them around t around the shop areas where I go. And again, I suppose the excitement of uh, gotcha machines are still pretty popular. Because after all, we do have them in games. <laughs> Real money grabbers. And I know I've probably talked about this subject before, but the con of uh, gotcha machines how they re are real money grabbers in uh, mobile games or any other video games. I guess people really, really, really want to get that certain character, so they're really willing to spend. Be willing to spend a lot of money just to try and get that character. Or that rare item. Now, if I said that. I don't do that. I would be lying. 
mainly because the character interests me is a shag of cool. Well, I don't know. It's just something about it just really pulls my attention. Okay, we didn't even get the whole conversation. But as I was saying, I suppose the cat. When it comes to like those gacha games like uh, Genshin Impact or any other game, I mostly like to try to go for the characters themselves because the weapons, you can get the uh, basic stuff at time. I mean, sure, the weapons make you more powerful, but the characters themselves, I prefer because. Let's just say there's always a backstory to them, and with Genshin Impact, you really do understand a bit more about them, their lives, their dislikes, even their backstory. And that's the one more you can get. One more you can get than just getting just getting a bloody weapon. Help, please! The hospital's overrun with monsters. I managed to escape, and now I can't go back. Anything strange happened recently? Well, there was this girl who's actually up on the fourth floor. After her eye surgery, she had trouble sleeping. I heard she was in a lot of pain when she died. Her suffering might have caused some corruption. Hmm. Can't just ignore it. Yeah. Now, if I may say that the idea of the girl suffering, that could be uh, negligent on the hospital's part. And I'm not saying that doctors would always do this, but there's always cases where some people would. The girl was supposed to be on the fourth floor, right? Doctor's trying to cover up their own mistakes to save their own hide. I mean, sure, if they fist, I mean, if they say, hey, I did this and I'm very sorry, there's a chance they'll be fine, sure, but. I can't remember the exact legal, name of the legal term for it, but. Malpractice, that's the name, Malpractice. Now, I've heard of cases where... Where doctors will own up to their own mistakes. And they may face repercussions, sure. I mean, I haven't heard that many myself other than what you hear from the news or... What you hear from just stories and all that, but... If people do own up to their mistakes, they try to make amends. Because doctors are people too and they make mistakes. I know that. But people who just hide the fact that they made a mistake saying it's not my fault because we must have happened in the surgery. When it was clearly a error on their part. They don't deserve their medical license. Because I personally know one good doctor who I go to. And she does a fine job looking after my dad and myself too. And I heard, do watch on YouTube some doctors who explain their life as a resident or a doctor and all that. And it, it's just pretty much someone who gives medical information and try to make it like as informative as possible and entertaining. But at the same time, they know they have to deal with uh, the stresses of like making sure they don't make a mistake because a person's life is in their hands. Now, I can't say that I can understand because I never practiced medicine, I never went to medical school, so I can't be in their shoes. But from what I understand, there are two types of doc several types of doctors. Some do it because they want to save lives, some do it just to want to get gain money and fame, and some, no, I don't really know, but the point is, when it comes to malpractice like that, People should really try to own up for their mistakes, not just sweep it under the rug. I think I just ran it on too long, and I apologize for that. You okay? Thinking about your sister? Yeah. And what a coward I am.
and I'm not trying to be like holy in it now, and I'm sorry if I do come off as that. Sometimes I just go on a rant and voice my own opinions without realizing that I may sound like a complete and utter D bag. And I don't mean to sound like that. But sometimes these people who just act like they're better than anyone and don't understand the mistakes just make me mad. Because. Saki? How come you can't sleep? Oh, I had surgery to get new eyes. Never since my history we given up my cold life. Corneal transplant. Maybe she's seeing the last thing the original owner of those eyes saw. Ooh. There's a door on the third floor they always keep shut. Don't you worry. Leave it to me. A cornea donor and a strange door. We might find something at the third floor nurse station. Okay, so I completely ran on this ramp for no reason. I mean, sure, I have some good points here and there, but I just ran on that ramp for nothing. Oh, what's this? It's a paper crane. I'm always amazed how people can do all garment like that. I mean, sure, I could do something similar like this, but for the hardest stuff, gosh. It's just amazing. Yeah, you can hear that, can't you? A visitor. Heck, I even mean, feel my little controller vibe right in a bit. Okay, I just want to finish what I was saying before, so to close the book, just. Yep, visitor. Come on! I can't even remember what I'm trying to say now. Myself a bit there. You're changing my mind about you. Thanks. No, I can't really remember what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, long story short, just the I understand that getting just screwed over by. Be people in the medical field or just people in medicine altogether because my dad he's in a wheelchair himself and I know he had a lot of good nurses and doctors taking care of him but there was just some in there that, that had no care about him at all just saw him as another patient just want to get over and done with just want him to get better straight in life I mean sure I can understand them to help people so they can get back on their feet right away, but just to help them, just to get them out of the hospital. My dad was... Okay, I need to pause this here for a sec. Basically, long story short, when my dad first had his stroke, he was going through rehabilitation, and he was doing so well after spending a few months in hospital. They were rehabilitating him, getting him back on his feet. His arm and leg were starting to work again, but then they just said, right, you need to go. And my dad was dumbfounded like, what do you mean? Like, no, you need to go. You need to go right now. And just kick. Well, they didn't literally kick him out of the hospital, but they. I'm not sure what really happened, but my dad was doing well in rehabilitation when he was uh, admitted to the hospital for the first time. Well, when he had his stroke. But ever since then, I mean, we've been going in and out of like uh, rehabilitations, and I know I'm part of the blame myself, but. At, Anytime he would be trying to make process, they would just pull the rug out from under him, like, nope, you can't do any, we can't uh, do, do help you anymore, you have to go. go. It's just ridiculous. 
because I get the feeling that might some people might actually see my dad as what's cost was just a waste of money. That's the depression I get anyway. So sorry if I go on about this. Anyway, no station. Got a visitor over there. Is that door open? Yeah. down there anyway but yeah I know there were a lot of good nurses and doctors helping him I think it's just the higher ups who just saw him as a lost cause I'm not really sure uh, not sure about you but this kitchen could usually be really clean I mean sure they have to keep the food constantly going because they're feeding the entire hospital for people I think the only time I ever get to truly clean here is uh, when they had to close up for the night. And the cafeteria food itself, we never have cafeterias in Australia, at least not with the school, school I went at to. But, um. Doesn't open. But I did try some hospital food. Well, rather, my dad had hospital food. Some of it was good, some wasn't really that well. There might be something about that girl in here. Over here. What's this? Okay. Kenta Wada. Fatal accident report. Kenta Owada was admitted with a fracture in his right femur. Prior to his death, his treatment was progressing well and it was close to being discharged. However, in the early hours of July 23, his body was discovered in an operating room. Cause of death is unknown. No signs of external trauma were found as, a, as Owada was regis uh, registered eye donor we are currently inquiring about p patients in need of corneal transplants. At the time his body was discovered, there was a report of some extremely strange things happening in the OR. Given the large number of similar eyewitnesses accounts, according to the area, uh, access to the area will be restricted for the time being, and the door will be locked with a passcode. I think this OR person might be Misaki's cornea donor. We know the passcode now. Let's try it out on that sealed door. What the heck was going on there? Ah, there was a visitor who did this to him? Well, maybe some maniac was just doing some transplant. Or maybe the girl's parents. I don't know. Note to the hospital director. When I found Owada in the operating room, before he died, he kept muttering how, about how he could see some woman. Okay, that's definitely a visitor then. Then I saw her myself. It was a terrifying sight to, to behold. She was like some kind of shadow, and she looked like she was wearing a mask. Please, you need to lock that OR. Oh, I've seen the shadow so many times in the day, and I know I'm not the only one. That r The room needs to be locked up before the patients start talking. Okay, that definitely sounds like a visitor. About that. Nice call note. Orcus 8. Miss Taki, the young corneal transfer receptor, seemed to be having trouble sleeping. Every night she used her call button and tells us she sees a scary lady when she closes her eyes. We think it must be some kind of po post OP delirium. If her symptoms pe persist, it might be best to bring in a psychiatric. Oh god. Died so young. 
Oh yeah, up here. What's that? She said statues. Statues of legendary Okinawan and uh, Okinawan creatures with the power to ward off evil. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right, so apologies. Me with Japanese names is not really that well. This must be the sealed door. Nice. Let's peek inside. Life good it is a visitor. Whoa. Alright, I'm getting vibes from the evil within. I'm definitely getting the evil within vibes. Also, another game developed by these people. Don't tell me they got inspiration from that. Over there, there's a, there's a spirit. Maxed out. A water? Received your corneas. She has the same problem. No, my eyes are making her suffer. If only we could do something about the monster. Maybe then that girl could escape from this at least. It's like a waking nightmare. Either way, we can't leave until we take her out. Pretty much. Let's go track her down. Sounds like a plan. I never played the... In the ward? Looks like the monster's influence has worn off. Both of you, try closing your eyes. It'll be okay. I'm so glad. I feel terrible that you suffer because of me. It's not your fault. Hearing that is more than I could have ever hoped for. But you two are the real heroes here. Hope everyone can rest easy now. I'm ready. You're okay now.
Sometimes I'm going to say, I don't hate hospitals per se, but I'm just scared. I remember one time I was in and out of hospital or something, I don't really remember. And I just felt like, real, absolute garbage. I can't remember what it was for. But all I know is I was in pain, and they were doing their best to look after me. And they were doing a tremendous job, at least trying the best they could. This was back when I was uh, younger, a kid. And... I know there's some good doctors and bad doctors out there, but... This is to say, some of them I don't really trust. Looks like you got rid of whatever was haunting the hospital. It's finally safe to go back inside. Thank you. Farewell. Alright, our next destination. Okay, we've got one more side quest over here. Actually, no, two more side quests, sorry. And then there were none. I'm gonna lost. We'll take this one here. Closest fast travel is here. Oh, it, it actually tells us all the stuff that is located in the um, shrine area here. Nice. That's actually very going to be very helpful. In case I'm not missing anything. All right. So since we're going to be a bit short on time, we're going to fast travel. Hey. There yeah, we know your favor. Okay, portrait of the spirit. Ah, uh, yeah. Is it me? What did that portrait just move? <laughs> freaky. Freaky, freaky, freaky. Hold on to this exercise in here for my uh, laptop charger. And in you go. Alrighty. Uh, down this way. separated. They were shopping around here. Maybe by the station. It's okay. We'll find your mom for you. Wait here. That was awfully nice. <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, let's head over here. Can't get over the fence. Of course. More spirits over here. In fact, there's a lot of spirits everywhere here. Getting blurry. This place has barely changed since the old days. Uh, could you knock it off with the old days stories? Hey, respect your elders, kid. Spot me too. Oh boy, it's one of those bigger blokes.
Turn around, big fella. Spirits around here. Yeah, I heard the two, the four, four to nine was a, it's a very popular space. Are you okay? We're here to help. I don't see any claws. Couldn't wait anymore. But all's well that ends well, right? Thank you both for everything, really. I'm wondering. I'm curious, though. Are you so nice to lost kids because you were a cop? Something like that. You couldn't just leave her there. And about me being nice, just doing my job. I think it's because he used to be a father himself. <laughs> All right, we've got a one last side quest, and then we'll probably have to get on with the main story itself. So let's try and do this last side quest here before we do the for the next episode. Now, I'm sure it's pretty, probably true elsewhere, but I heard the uh, school system in uh, in Japan is pretty, pretty, pretty strict. But then again, it's probably just all the games and anime once a while, reflecting how school life is hard and all that. But I heard the education system in Japan is really just pretty much just go, go, go. I mean, sure, they may have laxed it every now and again, but not every now and again. They've laxed pretty much a lot over the years, but I still heard it can be very strict. <laughs> Just like the human who usually feeds me when coming today. Sorry, fella. I'm sure they'd be back soon. But anyway, I'm not gonna go with the stuff I don't really know 100 about, so I'm just gonna say what I've just heard. Whoa. It's time to pay a visit. And then there was none.
Although, if there's one thing I could say, traffic in Sh Tokyo can be really backed up at the best of times, so the best way to get around Must is auto on foot. Spot. Let's look inside. Is auto on foot, by train, or by taking a bike. All those bitches on the other side. This place is in ruins. Let's see if we can figure out why. Whoa. Is that a Juno statue in there? No, it's an honor that can pick up. What the hell is that? It's a Japanese doll. A female doll dressed in traditional Japanese garb. Oh dear. Overtime policy complaint. Having days where where overtime isn't allowed won't change what work I have to, to get done. Clients aren't going to just wait for the next business day to roll around. Just pay us overtime instead of forcing us to take work home. What good's cutting back on overtime if you don't give people less work? Might be more to find. Let's keep looking. Something tells me that this guy isn't being completely honest with us. I think that was a big guy up there. angry. <laughs> what the flip was that? A rage walker. A type of visitor born from explosive rage, their anger is so intense that it causes the very land beneath them to tremble. <sighs> Bloody hell. Sounds like the type of boss who just get angry if you, if you don't even fall in line with him. Believe me, I read a lot of stories about that on uh, Reddit. I'm addicted to these stories. And very much addicted to see about these people can't get just as us. Here, 
I'm going to avoid a fight. I might as well heal myself up. Oh dear. Got a big fella. Frustration with promotion. I guess that. I guess the new. Sorry. I guess that new performance review system is why I was running as a manager despite being so young. But like, what am I supposed to do when everyone I'm managing is older than me and won't respect me? I feel like I was set up for failure here. It's an endless rut, kid. And sure, I can understand that. You've been working there a lot longer, you should have been long enough for that promotion, but instead the younger kid gets it. So, what do you do? You go to the upper management asking why, or just accept the fact. Because, with that, it's either... I think the upper management did this because they wanted someone young and gullible, so they wouldn't get in trouble. Oh, it looks like there was, was something in here. Let's see. Open office plan complaint. So, what? You thought not having any set work areas would improve communication? Because I feel even more alone now. Everyone's off making their... Little office... Uh, little office uh, cliches. And I'm less totally alone. Does sound pretty rough. Okay. I think I can put things together. I know the boss had good intentions, but still. Just kept the negative emotions piling up. Yeah, seems like your initiatives didn't work for your staff. It seems like you're a boss who should have probably been more hands off. Huh. So nobody was happy with how things were run? Well, now that I know, I can improve in the future. I swear I'm gonna do better by everyone next time. Don't work to death in the afterlife. Okay, I got a feeling that was just pretty much a filler. Filler slide quest, nothing major, just something small. 
so I was not meant to do that. All right. Well, no one has one sniper quest available. We start heading towards the light here, so I'll travel back to the kitty back here. Well, thanks to Shrub. Actually, no. I think we'll start doing that stuff in the next episode because I'm not sure how long cleansing the next shrine will take. So, that's going to be it for today's episode. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk to this guy. Well, did you see it? It's actually pretty nice, right? Yeah. Thank you so much for believing my story. Take care. Alrighty, that's going to be it for today's episode. Next episode, we'll start continuing on with the main story there. Figuring out what this ritual's all about. Because I got a bad feeling about this. And I have to admit, what's with this small patch here that we can't get into yet? And it looks like there's another yokai down here. So we better keep our eyes open for those. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, please remember to hit that like button. Also, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and show support for the channel. I didn't know that was on the back, yeah. So, anyway, hit the subscribe button, show your support for the channel. I'd very much appreciate that. And, uh, with that being said, I better get going. I've got one more stuff to do. And go again. I have to come back down here in the next episode. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves and uh, drive safely out there, people. Bye bye, take care. Have a good time.